So this is what we're gonna be painting, our little card. So we're gonna paint the outside first. I taped all my straight edges, press them down good so it doesn't creep under. I mean, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's fine if it's a little, you know, so people can see that it's handmade. So the outside, that's the back and that's the front, right? So we're just gonna do one line. I set not any drawing or hardly any drawing. Let's see, do I have a pencil? Yeah, I do have one here. Which is the back? No, I just, I just missed one thing. Okay, that's the back. Okay. This is the back or the outside of the card, right? right. So that would be the back because okay. it's folded under like this. This is the front. Okay. So if you wanted to number the pages, you know, like a book, yeah. um, then this would be page one, page two, page three, page four. Okay. You have ever done little you know booklets and stuff mm -hmm. like that you can get really confused on that <laughs> okay so i want to just do a little line where my mountains are like that so i pick up obviously on because that's going to be the continuation of my mountain so i did one little line so i know that's my sky and let's just um get some water and first before we wet it we should mix our colors or get our colors out because otherwise we have to do it again and I'm not a fan of having to do things twice so this is my cobalt blue it's a nice sky color there we are and um, maybe Let's do a little bit of Antwerp blue also. That's a darker and a much cooler blue. Can you see that? That's more like a turquoise blue. Can you see it mm -hmm. compared to that one? Mm -hmm. if, if anything, I would say our, and we can let them say hello to each other. <laughs> I like to have, I don't like to mix like one big puddle. Mm -hmm. I like to have like a, so now I have all sorts of different shades. And now I'm just gonna leave my brush like this because I have a ton of pigment in there and I'd hate to waste it. All right, and then, I always paint with two containers of water because I like to paint with clean water. As you can see, I'm, an, I'm a clean watercolorist. <laughs> I like my palettes clean, I like my colors clean, I like my water clean. I'm not one of those to paint with this, you know, muddy water. Eh! <laughs> and uh, all this mud on the palette. I don't like it. Uh, sometimes mud can come in handy and sometimes I will once, you know, I'm painting, but I. I always start with a clean palette. That's just me. It's not the only way of doing it. God knows. I've seen tons and tons of painters who paint with it. I mean, terribly dirty palettes, dirty water, and they paint beautiful paintings, but I can't have it. Not on my watch. Okay, so, and you can do whatever you like. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to get my obsessions. All water, see how nice and shiny? clean water on there and then I'm going to grab my brush here I'm going to go into more of the darker one and then I also have you know I have my water control station which is just my old terry cloth with some uh, paper towel on top that's where you can take that extra drop off your brush that's always going to drip and mess you up and be too much is that a 12 or what uh, the brush here the brush is number eight it's an eight and it, it doesn't matter so much. See here, I, I, I always like to have a couple of different colors. Just think it's more fun. So that the sky is not all like same old, same old. So, and wet on wet, so things flow. Don't want any hard lines. I rinsed out my brush, I dabbed it. And now I'm just gonna gently, oh, you know what I should maybe? I just dip the tip <laughs> of my brush into a little bit of that pink. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on the brush here just because I felt like it. You know, it's my painting, it's my world. So while it's still wet, I'm just with a very light touch and just the tip of my brush, I'm just going in to guide that paint down to the top of those mountains. And what paint was that? Opera. And then um, that's my sky. Voila. How opera, easy. Opera rose? Yeah, it was opera rose. You can barely see it. I mean, I, I barely you did barely any. It. Just a little. Makes it kind of grayish. Yeah, it yeah, makes it kind of grayish. Brings it's okay. It. Yeah, so I, I like that. I am, I'm happy with that. I, you know, we're not painting walls or anything. I like a little life in my sky. A little bit more up here. 
while it's still wet, you can do that. Once it starts drying, stay the heck out, because then you're gonna get blooms <laughs> and all sorts of things you don't want. Oops, I missed a little corner here. There. Okay, that's it. And before I, I stop, I think I wanna throw a little salt on. Shouldn't I throw a little salt on? I think that would be fun. While, so salt, want, you wanna get that on while it's in. I have plenty, I share. There we go. So I have a couple of fine ones, and I think I have one that's a little bit coarser. I'm gonna put a little bit of fine salt on, and I'm just gonna sprinkle, it's like cooking, just gonna sprinkle a little bit, you know, because it's a winter scene, right? So let's see if that'll do something. You wanna get salt on, not when it's like super dripping wet, because then usually nothing happens. Uh, and once it's like has lost its the shine and it's almost dry, then nothing happens either. So it's mm -hmm. a little bit with timing. And some colors do better with salt than others, but we'll see how this does. That's it. You can go paint your sky. And then we're gonna paint the foreground. Once, once you come back here, my sky will be dry. Alrighty. So mine's, yeah, sky's dry enough. I can gently brush the salt off. We don't want the salt to be sitting on it forever, but you know, it has to dry before you can get it off. Mine's off. And I got a nice salt reaction. I like it. Yeah. yeah. And then I did one more little line because I wanted to split up this big area into a couple of different mountain ranges. Can you see that? Uh -huh. It's very yeah. faint I do uh -huh. it because I don't like fat or pencil lines in my, in my watercolors. But I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but that's how I like it. Okay, so, and I um, upped my colors a little bit, put a little bit more cobalt blue out. I put a little bit more of that upper rose out. Then I put some French ultramarine blue out here and some burnt chenna that I'm gonna use a little bit later. Yeah. So <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna mix myself a little bit of a mountain shadow color. So I'm gonna use some of my cobalt blue and some of my uh, opera pinks, kind of a purpley color. Could dirty it up with just a hint and literally just a hint of that Burnt shenna. Can you see how that graded down just a little tad? Yeah. Can you see how it graded down a little bit? So I don't want it to look brown because that's dirty snow. I don't paint that. In my world, the snow is always beautiful and glistening and white. And clean. And clean. Yes. I leave the dirty snow to other painters. <laughs> if they want to paint that, that's fine, but I don't do it. So again, water because we're going to do another wet into wet. So I'm just following the little line I did and then get that water all the way out here. I wonder how my torn edge is gonna behave. I have no idea. Of course, this is actually the first time I painted on real watercolor paint, paint, uh, paper. It was not that much fun to paint it on that <laughs> cardstock, to be honest with you, because there was no, I couldn't, um, the, the colors would sink in right away. There was no smoothing out anything. So let's lift it up so we can see. Did we miss anywhere? Yeah, we missed a little bit there. And you can see I usually give myself a little bit of an, like half a millimeter to the pencil line with the water because, you know, it does seep a little bit. All righty, that's and good enough. And do you want it clear up to the torn area? Yeah, I did it clear up to the torn. And now I've got a big old brush here and just dipped mm. it in. And now I'm just going to follow because this, uh, this mountain range is gonna be the darkest at the bottom, you know? This, this light is coming from above. Mm. So as you go down the mountain range, it gets a little bit darker because of shadow. And that's gonna bring out the top of the range in front. And that's how you, you know, you paint. It, and even though snow is white, it's not really right, white the whole, the, then it looks just flat. So you need to get a little color in there. Oh, so, so I'm gonna rinse it out now. Of course it's gonna, I want it lighter as we go up. And now I'm just gonna, can you see how I'm pulling up a little bit? Kind of mm. on a diagonal, just give it a little, gives it a little shape. Can you see how already that looks like snow? Mm. It's good enough for me. Um, so, and again, we don't wanna, you know, fuss around too much with these here. It's, I'm just cleaning up the edge here before I go on. And then I, th I feel confident that I can probably get it a, some color on down here, even though this is still wet. I don't want the two areas to meet 
but I want the top of this mountain here to be white. So I, I'm just gonna put a little bit of water on, like at the bottom, but not go all the way out, up so that they meet. So I have a, a border of dry in between. And then I'm just gonna go get some more of that cobalt blue and a little bit of the burnt sienna in. And just kind of going back and forth from my puddles here until I find a color I like. There, that's about it. I don't like, again, I don't like it too, too brownish. It doesn't look right to me. And then I want to put some color on down here and down here, kind of like that. Of course, that kind of pushes you into the, the picture, I feel. And then I'm going to rinse out my big old brush dab it on my towel so that it's not like dripping wet and then I'm just gonna pull up so I don't want like any like hard lines just all like nice and soft you know S snow is very kind of fluffy and I don't want to touch there but I can just pull down like this like this and maybe a little bit on this side here it's safe there there so now Rinse out my brush again because I see a couple of areas where I would get some. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Yes. I call them ghost lines. It's where it hits the dry and there's still a little tiny bit of pigment. So if I go in with like just a damp brush and kind of while it's still damp, smooth those out just with a tip, I think I'm good. There. Good enough. So we are gonna do a little bit more tall mountains, not much, but a little bit more. And I have my French ultramarine blue here, and then I have two puddles of uh, my uh, burnt sienna because I'm gonna use them for two different things. And I put more of my Antwerp blue in here. Now, if you don't have Antwerp blue, um, Prussian blue is same pigment. Um, so you can use that. Or you could also use the um, French ultramarine blue, whatever floats your boat. So the first thing I want to do is I want to have a really thick color. So you can see my French ultramarine blue here. It's like so can see how it's really thick. It's almost dry. Mm -hmm. And I didn't put any like a lot of water on my brush. So it's not moving as opposed to like some of the other puddles we've been painting with have been a lot more water in them. And now I want to put a little bit, not very much, so I'm just dipping my tip into that burnt sienna. Can you see what happening? Oh, yeah. It's happening to my yeah. blue. Graze it. it graze it down because yeah. basically it works as complementary colors because blue is a primary color, meaning that, you know, blue, blue, red, and yellow, those are pri the three primary colors, and that means that they are basically I say the parents of any other color combination you can find on earth. You cannot mix to get a blue, you cannot mix to get a uh, red, and you cannot mix to get a ye yellow. But mixing those three colors with each other in various and sundry combinations creates all other colors. So, um, and burnt sienna is uh, basically a mixture of red, yellow, and a little bit of blue. And so it's kind of like a dirty orange. <laughs> and and then uh, blue, so and orange and blue are complementary colors. So when you mix it with the blue, that's how it's it's the easiest way to get a neutral, as we call it when we want it. And if we don't want it, it happens. Oops, we call it mud. 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 <laughs> See, we have a positive word for it. Mm -hmm. neutrals. That's kind of nice. That's when we oh that was what we meant to do. And when it happens, and I was oh darn, it went muddy on me. That's when we was. We were not paying attention to what we were doing. So that's a nice, almost black, right? Yeah, uh -huh. it and it's very dry. My brush is very dry. And you started with French ultramarine. I started with French ultramarine. And you have to, I think it's best to start with the French ultramarine blue and then put a little bit at a time of the burnt sienna in because the burnt sienna has much more tinting power than the French ultramarine. So it's not half-half. Yeah. Then you're going to get like a brown. Yeah. And I don't want brown here. Those rocks this far away. So I'm going like on my towel to kind of take a little bit of the moisture away. And then 
I'm holding my brush on the side, not like, you know, I'm normal. And I'm not putting very much pressure on. And what I want to do is I want to kind of like the side of the brush to kind of drag like that over my mountain here. I want to kind of create oh. some of those rocks, right? That are sticking up through the snow and make sure you do it like in different directions and some like little fatter clumps and some skinnier clumps. And I have a little boo-boo there, so I'm gonna put some dry brushing over. Can you see how that then starts looking like, you know, the mm -hmm. rock sticking up mm -hmm. through the snow? And depending on how much you put on, that's, you know, how much snow is up there. But there's usually always a little bit of this. It may be right when it's just had a big snowstorm and it hasn't had any time to slide off or whatever. You might not see any of this, but most of the time, you know, on some of the mountaintops, there'll always be some of the, you know, the sheer rocks where the snow just can't stick. They stick up. So I just want to drag down a little bit more. This is kind of fun. And then obviously go back, load up again. Do a bit more here of that, that kind. And this, I think dry brushing is probably the harder of the techniques, wet into wet is not all that difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, wet on dry is not that difficult. But dry brushing does take a little practice. So now I wanna get some on over here on that far away mountain. And I, I'm kind of tending to drag a little bit that way because I feel that kind of will look a little bit like the slopes of going this way and how the light hits it and stuff. So there's that, just a little bit like that. And again, it's good enough. Doesn't that look kind of no. like a little bit more interesting mountain? I want to fix it a little bit here. So if you see some places that kind of look a little odd, that's where you're going and just mess it up a little bit. If it looks too regular or whatever. That's the biggest problem we do is often we have it too regular. All right, so I like that. So that's kind of like steep. That's where those daredevils go down. I like what your salt did. My, my paper was too wet. Um, it almost looks like stars in the sky. Yeah, it is. Whatever you think it is, that's what it is. That's what I always like to say. <laughs> so while you're up here, and I don't want you to go back and forth, and we can do one more thing because dry brushing, you know, I mean, it doesn't take much. Um, so I want to put some uh, little trees down here. Uh -oh. Is what I'm <laughs> thinking. It's until now, you know. <laughs> so I'm going to create a little tree color. And um, I don't want it too, 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 too green. So I think I want to take a little bit more of my French ultramarine blue and put in here with my ant whip and then see what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and voila, can you see how that, because of the ant whip blue having a little bit of yellow in it? That's the green. It adds, green, makes it kind of greenish. But not so green, green. I don't want it like bright green because it really would not look bright green like that. It's like dark and more bluish. And see, here's another. So now I have two different beautiful green colors. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. You're using your dagger brush? I'm using my dagger brush because for my trees, I tend to like to use that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just dab, just spritz on a little bit of water. Use the dot? The dot bottle. That's the dot, That's the dot bottle. Can you see how I have little dots of water there? Mm. And I don't want my trees to be too dark. Mm just want a little and I want them it's just a clump it's like a so I go in and I do some like it's kind of like the trunks and can you see how it kind of runs out in an, in a pattern yeah. because of those dots I mean it just makes painting trees so easy so I usually do it like this I like to do some little and then let's go and break up here and let's put a little bit more dot on here I didn't really do it on here there so that's the front of your card now this is the front of my card Yes. And so, okay, so I'm first doing kind of like the trunk shapes is how I feel it is. And then I, I go in and then I connect them. You know, that's all the little branches. 
and then here. It'll be darker at the bottom and more together because you know they they're like cones, right? And so they'll be overlapping and stuff like that. I don't want to paint little individual trees. I don't want to paint, I'm painting like a forest here, right? It's the woods here at the bottom. And so too much coffee, I always like to say, that's a perfect thing for this here, because you know, you, can't, <laughs> you just got to kind of dibble dabble. It's di I call this dibbly dabbly. Dibbly dabbly. Dibbly dabbly. <laughs> and you want to have some of those little holes so the birds mm. can fly through, right? <laughs> Think about that. Mm. Birds have to fly through, and uh, you got to be a little fast, and so that it doesn't dry on you, because then you get all those hard edges. And I want it to float a little bit, float, flow out a little bit. You know, not nothing too, you know, defined. And just move across here. But can you see? Let me turn it around so you can see. Can you see how that starts looking mm. like? You know, exactly evergreens, right? Yeah. And they, I don't have them too green. They're more bluish green because I, that's how I see it. We all see things in our own way. And I tend to see evergreens as very bluish and, yeah. and dark. But since I don't want them to be like in my face, I don't want them to be too dark. And if it starts drying on you, a little bit of spritzing does wonders. And so I like to have a couple of these here be a little taller so they can overlap there. Just kind of connect those two. And remember, they're a little fatter at the bottom and they're all different heights. Don't have them all like same heights because this is not a Christmas tree plantation. <laughs> this is actually nature and they're all different ages and some had it easy, some had it hard. So, you know, so don't make them all same old, same old. So, a little bit like here. Maybe I want to do this one tall, why not? And just like that. And then I'll just do a couple little ones out here. They're kind of petering out. <laughs> Maybe up there, just for fun. I'd like to have a little opening there. There, doom. And then I'm just gonna go in and dab in a couple of darker spots, a couple of places. And then I'm, now I'm just on, I'm on, to similar patrol. <laughs> so wherever I see something that's like, or something where there's some weird shape that doesn't look like anything, and so people get stuck there and say, what's that? Then you will go in and make it so that they can see, oh, that's a tree. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, just something rec recognizable. Voila. Mm -hmm. Right, that's mm -hmm. good enough. Mm -hmm. All righty, so, I mean, I can totally leave it like that. It's fine. Um, but if I wanted to give it a little bit more dimension, I could go in and use some of this stuff I have in my palette that could be used as a shadow color, a little bit darker, but still, you know, you want it, you don't want to go in with like a whole completely different color. So I want to get a little bit of like a bluish purpley color on. I should be able to get that here somehow. There, that's a good color. I like this one. Doop, doop, doop. Okay, so, you know, these mountains, they also do have some little indentations and shadows and stuff like that. So you could go in and put those on in certain areas, like that. And then here, maybe there's, like here. Bring it down behind that one. Maybe there's a little there. You know how they have these little funny kind of fingers or whatever? Um, these sharp shadows. And here, behind, use that line there would be maybe a good one. Is they call them couloirs? Uh, maybe, I have no idea what it's French called, yeah? Yeah, it's like a little canyon. Yeah, exactly, they have little canyons like that. So, you know, it can give a little bit more dimension to your mountains if you go in and you can totally make it up. I mean, I'm not looking at any particular mountain and this is usually how I paint anyway. I'm not like one of those painters that, you know, have a picture and then I try to make the picture. I, I like to just have some maybe photo reference and a lot of times, you know, when I'm painting things from around here or other places where I'm very familiar with what things look like. So I just wanted to soften that edge a little bit. Um, I don't really need to uh, 
to see exactly what things look like because that's not what my painting style is. I'm not like a photorealist or anything like that. I just want to give you the feeling of a place, you know. That's what I think painting should. But can you see how that can give them a little bit more pizzazz? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it's just a different way of doing it. And again, I just wanted to show it to you. It's not like you now you have to go and do that and you're like, oh, I was happy with it the way it was. If you're happy with it, you know, don't. It's just, I thought it might be good to show you that that's another option of doing a little bit more to the mountains. So if I do it in the first mountain range, I should do some on this one too. Here going in and this is where those crazy snow snowboarders go down <laughs> it's this one here <laughs> yours truly she is not a downhiller she's like a nice she had, I like I like cross country nice and flat yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's what I like that's my husband going down there okay snowboard. <laughs> Daredevil. Yeah. yeah, I'm not a daredevil. I'm a, kind of a chicken when it comes to these <laughs> kinds of things. Heights. <laughs> yeah. So. It's scary. So anyway, so that's kind of fun to do that if you want to. But you can see that gives it just a little bit more character. And you, we always have to remember when we're painting, when we're painting, we're sitting here with our noses in it. That's not how you enjoy a painting, you know? I mean, paintings, they are really, you know, you see them from afar, so... So uh, you always have to check your paintings and make sure that um, you don't get too obsessed with something. Step away from it, plop it up somewhere and take a look. And if it still needs something, then go in and do it. But don't, you know, sit here and think you can judge everything. So I'm going to call this done now. So like I mentioned to you last time, this was what we uh, painted in class here. And I had used my uh, half-inch tape to uh, to uh, cover up the so that we get a nice white edge around our artwork. And I noticed that I actually got it quite dirty on the inside because I did it like this. So I think it's probably a better idea to do it like this. Just tape it down to a board. Um, with just your regular tape and then just, you know, give it a, a little edge. And then when it's done on the outside, we can just carefully take our tape off and then it's nice. And I don't think that it got dirty on the other side doing it this way. So I think that's the method I would use from now on. Let's flip it over and see. Yeah, see, then there's no dirt or anything versus this one. And then, of course, where, if I wanted to paint on this one now, I would do the exact same thing. I would tape it I'll down tape here. It down. And since I learned from, uh, from uh, doing it this way that it does pick up some uh, wet watercolor from the board, I don't want to leave it loose because then I'm gonna dirty up my back, is what I'm realizing. So I am, even though I have already taped it around the edges, I'm actually going to tape it down. Now I don't have to be so careful because I already got the straight edges, mm -hmm. but I'm still gonna tape it down because I don't want my outside to then be all yeah. messed up right. when I'm done. That, sense. that would be kind of yeah. annoying. So that's how, you know, you learn. All the time we learn something new. And i um, just gonna do that real so quick. Like, Eva, who yeah. is the um, Skillshare lady you said you saw? Okay, yeah, so let me tell you, uh, the Skillshare teacher that came, that I learned this particular kind of idea with, uh, her name is Melinda Wild. She's from the west coast of Canada and she's a wonderful teacher. I love watching her. She has so many good ideas. She was also the lady where I learned about, I taught some of you that took my class, uh, my other class, my uh, watercolor technique class. 
last month. Um, remember I said that uh, you can now make your own masking fluid if you want oh, yeah. from this um, speed sew, which is really for, you know, hemming yeah. your pants or, you know, uh, <laughs> without using a, th a thread and needle. Uh, it's, it's like a fabric glue and you can actually make your own and it works like a charm for um, for creating your own masking fluid if you just uh, mix it up with a, about 50 50 water and and the speed so uh, and she has um, she has a little Skillshare video where she has I think it's about 10 tips watercolor tips and that was one of the tips that I you know I'd never heard of that before so she's wonderful and she, she's, uh, I've, I, I really enjoy her classes. And she seems like a super nice and fun lady. She lives on some little island, something Gab <laughs> Gabriola, something like that island um, off of Vancouver. There by um, Vancouver Island and stuff. Some Is Canadian. anyone else done Skillshare? I'm sorry? Yeah. Have you tried Skillshare also? I'd yeah. love to have it, but I haven't yeah. done it. I'm really, I mean, I... I love it, because I you can learn so much. three months, yeah. and then in October, I had a lot of time on my hands, and I thought, this is the time, so 99 bucks, and I... Yeah, and that's also, for a whole year. It's for the whole year, which is well worth 99 Absolutely, you can learn anything there. It's all online, and it's very step-by-step, -step. it's critique. Um, you can post your... Your, your <laughs> projects your, your and stuff. Your projects, <laughs> and... There's some, it, it takes a while to sort through what you like and yeah. don't like. Yeah. But I'll show you one that I, I want to show you. Yes, the, yes, yes. That I really enjoyed this one, Gal. Either you like someone or you don't. It's yeah. so easy. Yeah, yeah. To and and then, the you just, <laughs> then you just, then you just go to another one because, you know, they all, they is many, many different styles of teaching. Exactly. Um, exactly. And there's a lot, a lot of, um, I've noticed there's a lot of illustrators and uh, graphic designers oh. there. You know, and they have, a, and they do paint with watercolor, but they have a different approach yeah. to what, mm -hmm. they're not so much into the techniques and stuff, you know, I mean, no, it's more no. like a, just a, yeah, you know, Yeah, I was color. lost in those. I yeah. was like, nope, I don't want that. Yeah, so it's, but there is, for, there is, and there's uh, more complicated ones, and there's super simple ones. But you can search for, yeah. I want watercolors, and I, what I haven't done is I want like beginner or in intermediate. Right. I think I can do that. But yes. I haven't, yes. Haven't done that. Yeah. No. No. I mean, so yeah. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful platform. It is. It is. And it's so Skillshare.com. Yeah. 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 And as I say, you know, can get the two months uh, free subscription if you go to my website. I have a link where it says right on my front page there uh, mm -hmm. to get two uh, months free uh, Skillshare, you know, to try it out, click here and it takes you straight to, I do think, I mean, you have to sign up yeah. and I do think you have to give you a credit card number, but I yes. do, yeah, but they don't charge it. They don't. But you, you know, and if you decide it's not for you, then you go in and unsubscribe and it doesn't cost you anything. Uh -huh. And if you love it, it's, it, you can pay either by the month and then I think it's like $15 or something. Apple Tunes. Because I have all yeah. Macs. Right, and uh, and um, and if you uh, sign up for one year, you get it for ninety nine dollars. So it's just like everything, you know. I yeah. mean, if you sign up for a little bit longer time, you get a much better deal. Uh -huh. yeah. But after if you've tried it for two months and if you really love it, I mean, it's worth ninety nine bucks, mm -hmm. I think. If anyway. you have the time. If you that's have the time, yeah, yeah, true. that's all right. It's like everything. Mm -hmm. Exercise machines, uh, <laughs> programs. Yeah. It's, right. You don't get better at painting by no. signing up, okay? <laughs> and you don't get skinnier by, by signing up for a gym membership. You gotta actually do it. But yeah, so and every we all know ourselves, you know. So you just know if that's you know something that you would you would do or not okay so what i did now here I taped it down and you can see it's a little dirty but i'm gonna just not worry about that obviously um and uh i'm gonna paint in my sky first as we did in the first one and what did i where, oh i can't see it yeah there's one so anyway what brushes and colors uh so i'm gonna use a uh, cobalt blue i'm gonna and i have some there so cobalt blue I think I used a little bit of um, uh, Antwerp blue, and yeah, I also think I used did I use a little bit of the pink or the red? Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. 
So um, I'm gonna try now that I flipped it over without really paying too much attention. So I'm gonna so try. So can the back and have the, different colors? Pardon me. The, the 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 back doesn't have to match the. Front it's part. best if it matches the front because you well, know you show. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't have to be like. But it, it, since they show through, you see, I mean, it would be kind of weird if the sky is a sunset <laughs> here and m night yeah. here, for instance. You know. <laughs> So I would say that it's best if your if your sky at least because that's going to show through, kind of matches up. Um, because like this, right? I mean, it is best if it kind of uh -huh. relates to the back. Uh -huh. Doesn't have. I mean, you can see mine's not exactly. It's a little bit darker, but I think it's best if it down. kind of relates a little yeah. bit. Take a picture and make sure. So cobalt yeah. blue Antwerp. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, then I'm going to put. Yeah, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, my permanent rose in. Okay. That's what I think I did. And so here's my Antwerp. Because I wanted a little bit of a darker and then had a little bit of kind of like a purpley tinge to it. That's what the pink does. Maybe a little bit more. And, but, you know, you can do whatever sky you want to do. That It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And I'm going to wet it first. Let's grab this. Just the sky. I, yes, so I drew a very faint line. And of course, I use this as my guide and let that, because that's a mountain range that is continuing over here, right? From the torn edge mm -hmm. and then a drawn edge so that they relate. So it's not like they're not connected. The whole idea with this is that it's a mm -hmm. one landscape. It's not like four different landscapes, you know, on front mm -hmm. and back and inside. It's one landscape, all of it front and back. How are people going to display that gorgeousness? Yes. What we were talking about last time, what I was saying is this is a card you would paint for somebody very special yes. who would appreciate it. And this would actually kind of be, if not the gift, definitely part of the gift. Or because I normally never send out cards that are original paintings. Because for, for my personal opinion, it takes me way too long to paint. Mm -hmm. And you know, we all know how people kind of often treat cards. They say, oh, that's really nice <laughs> toss, <laughs> right? Um, myself included sometimes. Sometimes, I mean, I like to display cards just at least for a little bit. I put it, I pop it up somewhere so I can mm -hmm. kind of enjoy it. But I don't hang on to them for years. No, I, I, I will admit that. Uh, or you can totally, and we're going to talk about that, you can totally photograph this just like any other card and then have it mass produced on card stock i guess and you could do both sides or something maybe. well that's yeah of course you would so you take a photo off the this side you'll take a photo of the back side and then you get it printed out on the front side and then you get it printed out on the back side you know have it lined up right and all this stuff and then you could take a pair of scissors and you just cut off this thing or you mm -hmm. could tear it but cutting would be a lot easier or just take an exacto knife mm -hmm. There's more in work involved, but that way you could definitely, you know, um, multiply one card into a number of cards. All right, so I'm now going to put my color on here. I wetted the, the sky first, so it's wet into wet. We know my favorite method of painting. And I'm just gonna put it on. I'm just gonna follow my mountain here. Goes like that. And then I'm gonna run in some more color. Looks like I have it a little too wimpy. Want it a little darker. And a little bit more of the reddish in. There. I think now it kind of sort of cobalt, Antwerp, and a little bit of that um, pink. Uh, mine is permanent rose. You can use your quinacridone red. You can use, you know, whatever pink or red you want to use. I think this is good enough. 
I just, and you don't have to, you could just have it cobalt or you could just whatever. I just always like to have a little bit extra color. So there's something going on in the sky. And didn't I throw some salt on last time? So I should throw some salt on this time. And you can see, you know, I'm painting on a 140 pound paper. It is bubbling up a little bit, which it does when it gets this wet. And, but it's, it, it calms right down again. So I don't worry about this. So here's that, and I always like to just give it a little moment to start sinking into the paper before I throw the salt on. If you throw your salt on and it's dripping wet still, it usually just kind of melts the salt and nothing much happens. Now, if you wait too long, then nothing happens either. So it's one of those things. And honestly, salt is a very unpredictable media or method or whatever. I mean, it's kind of like, you got to learn to love what you get. Sometimes you get like fantastic action, other times nothing, other times just a little, mm. mm -hmm. it all depends. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some, some on and hope for the best. All right, so mine's not completely dry, but it's dry enough that I can start painting in the mountain ranges. And you can see, I think I got really nice Yes. Uh, salt action here. Um, so I'm happy with that. And uh, then I'm going to do the same as I did on the front here. Um, now I'm going to put in a little bit. You know, I, want, I don't want this to be like one big mountain. I want to have, you know, some overlapping going on. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna grab this line here and I'm just gonna go like that. And then here in the back, I think I'm gonna grab this one here and do like that. So then that's the back mm. mountain, then this one, and this is the foreground mountain, right? So that way it's split up in three areas, just so, you know, kind of you get a little perspective and um, a little bit more of an interesting um, background. And so now we're gonna mix our shadow color for the snow. What I already did was I took out a little bit of burnt shenna. And um, I have my cobalt blue here. So I'm gonna take some cobalt blue put it in here and it's going to be quite watery because I don't want too much color. And then I'm just going to, I'm not even rinsing out my cobalt blue from my brush here. And I'm just putting the tip into that burnt shenna. So I'll get a little bit on the tip and I'm going to, can you see how gray that already went? And so I don't want it too brownish gray because then it's kind of dirty city snow. I don't paint that. <laughs> I paint pretty glistening white mountain snow. That's that's my, and then I th I like it to have a tiny tinge of maybe a, a purple. So I'm gonna again just do the tip on the brush that's not even rinsed out, and get a little bit of that in. Not very much. You have to be very careful with both the uh, yeah. See that's exactly what I'm looking for. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. To me, that's just mm -hmm. such a good snow shadow color maybe a little bit more on this one then i have two different ones i have one that's more blue there i always like to have a little variety and then i have something very weird here on my tip let's get that off <laughs> all right so now i got my um color for my um snow shadows and now i'm going to just uh, put some water into my mountains and i'm going to start with a mountain in the back here so clean water, and then I might not go all the way to the line. Just keep a slight, slight distance and then get water on this mountain. And I also am careful that I don't get uh, water all the way into the sky because I know my sky is still a little damp and it could bleed or make a bloom or something. I don't really want that. So can you see how I got some water there? but I left a little tiny bit of distance to the pencil lines and a tiny bit of distance just to there because I didn't wait for that to dry completely. And then I have my shadow color on my brush here and I put it in 
down here and then gently follow that line and now I want to go to the pencil line and just deposit and by putting the water in you know I don't get a hard line here can you see how it's fussing up so it gives me a little bit more time to be careful that I hit this the way I want there and now a little bit more I'm going to rinse out my brush and dab it on my towel make sure it's clean and then it's damp but it's not dripping wet and then just with the tip I'm going in and just kind of dragging that color up so that it goes almost up to the top and I don't have any hard edges. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So it's a lot lighter here because it's snow and I know this as it, as it as it goes down here into the valley, it's away from the light and that's why it gets darker. And if you feel that it wasn't quite dark enough, you can always go in and just dab in a little bit more while it's still wet and then it'll spread nicely. And you can also go in and do a little, oops, like that. Just give it a little bit of a, a texture, a little rolling hills by putting in a little bit. And then I rinse out my brush and then I can go in and just kind of soften it out. Mm. And it, it'll it kind of collect a little bit in that bend. So with a thirsty brush, a thirsty brush is a clean brush where you squeezed out all the water and then you can just kind of tap it into gently a wet area and it'll soak up that extra water and pigment. But I'm happy with that back mountain. Mm -hmm. It looks fine to me. And then um, normally I would probably let it dry if I was just at home in my studio. But here I don't want you to have run back and forth all the time. And it's the same methods and it's repeat of what we did in the first painting. So I'm just gonna here go in and do, whoops, the next mountain. And what I think I want to do is I'm gonna paint the foreground. I'm gonna skip this one uh, right now. And I'm just gonna put a lot of water in here. And that's where I have all this dirty stuff. So if I scrub on it a little bit, maybe it'll be, it, it'll, it'll soften a little bit. But again, I'm not gonna let it bother me. And then I'm going to put water on. And then here, remember, because this is still wet, I'm going to keep a little bit of a distance so it doesn't bleed together and leave a bloom that I'd have a hard time kind of explaining what the heck that is mm -hmm. in my painting. And so I'm just wetting it. And then here also leaving just a tiny bit of a distance, just so nothing blooms. And just looking here to see if I can find some dry spots that I missed. Because you know, uh, the pigment, remember, where does it go? It goes everywhere where you put water on. And where does it not go? Everywhere that's dry. Even if, you know, so if I have a dry spot, spot somewhere in here, it'll run around it and it'll leave a hard edge. And that might not be what I want. So. Um, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to grab that same color and now I'm going to run it in also here from the bottom and down here, a little bit up like that. And here. And now I have to just look at it a minute and I can run in a little bit more. I do like to have it a little bit darker so I'm going to get a little bit more of the cobalt blue and then dirty it up with the with the um, uh, burnt sienna and put a little bit of that pink in. So I I like to uh, have it a little darker, kind of in those in the bottom and kind of in the corners. It kind of pushes you into the picture. And now I'm going to rinse my brush. And just gonna make sure I don't have any like weird hard edges anywhere. So with just a damp brush, I'm just kind of making sure that everything is looking okay. Not too wet there. Here where I have my dirt, I better get it a little bit darker, <laughs> you know. And I like to have some, a little bit, you know, not everything 100% the same color because 
that also kind of indicates some undulation in the snow. So let's see if we can do a little bit darker down here. And a little bit more here. I'll hold it up so you can see in a minute. And then there. And maybe here, kind of. Can you see, like, when you do that, you kind of get some feeling of the snow undulating. You're going to have an avalanche. Yeah. <laughs> Always positive. <laughs> so here, that's good enough. So now I've got those two painted, and then I'll wait with the, with the last one right. because that's going to be... Uh, too wet on both sides. So again, I could do my thirsty brush trick here. Can you see how it's kind of gathering here? And just with a thirsty brush, just kind of pick up a little bit of that pigment. I mean, it's gonna be a little bit, but you know, you can minimize it. There, super duper easy. Okay, so I last minute threw a little bit of salt on here right before it started really to dry and I actually managed to hit it just in the right moment so I actually got some pretty nice uh, little textures there. I like that kind of texture in my snow uh, winter landscapes <laughs> because it looks so wintry to me like you know frosty and you know so, um, so I'm quite happy with that. We just need to get a little color on this fella here and same colors as before cobalt blue dirtied up with a little bit of very little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of my pink which is in my case happens to be the permanent rose but it can be any kind of a pink it could also just be the quinacridone red that works just as well um, so here so again I just put water inside And I got quite a lot there. It's gonna run. So let's see. Yeah, I don't think I missed too much. And then I'm just gonna take that shadow color and put it. Need to grade down. Maybe a little bit more. Gonna put it right behind here. So we outline that ridge of the front hill. And maybe grade down just a hint. And I don't mind it being a little bit darker over here. I think that would be nice. Those are all, you know, artistic decisions that you make. Oops. If you have drops on the shaft of your brush, make sure you get them off because they have a tendency to want to fall right where they're not very useful, to <laughs> say the least. So here, and again, maybe I'll pick a little shadow on a couple of these little, you see how I'm just, oh, yeah. you know, it just gives it a little undulation. It's amazing how little it takes to uh, give some 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 form to these snowy hills slash mountains and i'm gonna do the same with the salt here this time i'm actually gonna remember it so i want to put a little salt on there that could be probably be a good little texture we'll see and i think it's maybe dry enough that I can kind of brush the salt off here. It's not 100% dry, but dry enough. Because I wanted to show you how I'm going to put some tree shapes on. You know, I, I find that it's really, really nice um, to put a little bit more shape into the mountains. I mean, you could totally, there's many ways of painting mountains. There's many kinds of mountains, right? So here they can totally, I could totally leave them like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just seeing one thing. Can you see right here? I'm getting a little bit of a hard edge right there. I don't really want that. And right there. So I'm just, while it's still damp, I could kind of scrub that up. Um, 
So totally leave them like that. There, they're much softer. Maybe there's a tons of snow on here. So it's really covering up all, even the, the out peaks and the rocks and everything is just full of snow. Um, and then um, you can go in and do a little bit like that. You know where, how they cast these shadows mm -hmm. where there's little crevices in the rocks and things and some, some are sticking out and things like that. So you can put a little bit of hard edges into your rocks. And there, I, you know, I did it there, there. Here, I kept it, kept it quite soft. And then I have a sharp ridge right here. Uh, so you could do that. And the way you do that is get some of your shadow color, snow shadow color, and possibly do it just a tad bit darker than what you did on the snow shadows. Just a tad, and there's a good color. And then you find one of the, it's best if you find one of the peaks, so I'm gonna find this peak here, and then, you know, kind of wiggle it down like that. And sometimes they'll just be like that. And I often like to then with a damp brush, just softening this edge just a little bit. So it just kind of a little bit more gradual. But can you see how you can get some yeah. really cool little shapes in your mountains by doing that? And I'm just gonna soften this one. Go across there would be nice. And kind of disappear down there. But you can see how you can get some, and then maybe even go this way a little bit. It can totally go that way a little bit. And then it goes like that. So all these little crevices in the mountains, those are kind of fun to bring out. And uh, on this front one here, if I take some of the moisture off and maybe use my French ultramarine blue, very dry. See how dry uh -huh. it doesn't move? Like, you know, here it's much, much wetter. It doesn't barely move. And I'm gonna take a little bit of that burnt shenna in there to gray down that blue. Here, that's perfect. That's a good color. And see how dry it is? Mm -hmm. That's what you need for dry brushing, you need dry. So it has to be on dry paper. So you have to wait for, and then lots of pigment and not very much water in your brush. So I often like to take a Kleenex and then press the bottom of the hairs against this Kleenex to kind of soak up that extra water. And then you have to have a very, very, very light touch. Barely put any pressure on the brush. You do not hold the brush like this. You hold it like this, parallel to the paper. And you hold, see how I'm holding it way out here? Yeah. And so it's basically just the weight of the brush. I don't put any extra pressure on, it's the weight of the brush. And then very, and I, I like to use my dagger brush for it, but a round brush works just as well it's not what brush, it's more what you do with the brush. And then I just very gently kind of drag it across. And can you see how it leaves some pigment mm. on the bumps in the paper? And it gives that texture as if some of these rocks are, you know, the snow can't stick to them. And if you do a little bit like here, that means that snow is really, really thick and there's barely anything is sticking up. And if you do a little bit more, then, you know, the snow has slid off some of them. And it gives a really good look, I find. And make sure, don't do like, eh, 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 all, you know, has to, you see how I'm varying the brush, varying the directions, because that's, it's nature is so random. So don't have it all like uh, same direction. And so I'm gonna put a little bit of that up here too. So I usually do this, up here on the tops. And can you see how that just starts reading like mm -hmm. those mountain tops and there's some, you know, rocks sticking up. 
and if you have something too regular, you go in, mess it up, so to mess up the regularity, so to speak, there. It gets too monotonous if it's... So I think, I can't really tell, but from upside down here, I think this is good. Again, just a little goes a long way, I think. Mm -hmm. That looks like mountains to me. I'm going to leave them alone. What, the only thing I am going to do is... Since I put those ridges in there, it looks kind of silly if it's only one of the mountain ridges that have that. So I'm going to go in and I can do that. So you can do the dry brushing before or after you put these little uh, crevices in. Doesn't matter. So I'm going to put a couple more in just so that it doesn't look like I painted three different kinds of mountain paint ridges. So you can see I put that ridge in there, right? And I don't go, they don't go all the way down. They kind of disappear again. And I think right here, it just lends itself to one of those. They're very often kind of like a little triangularly shaped. See that? That one, I think that's kind of good. And then again, I tend to like to soften one of the edges a little bit. I think that looks better. But whatever you think, and maybe put a little bit in here there. And again, it's going to soften it a little bit. And it could be down there. And soften it a little bit there. And this is totally optional. If this, you know, scares the bejesus out of you, don't do it. <laughs> If you're like, oh, I like my picture, I don't want to have to ruin it now, don't do it. It's just an option. And let's see how that would go. That would go then. I'll soften this one a little bit on this side. Okay. And I'm going to call that good. And see how I got a wonderful, wonderful texture here. Love that. Mm -hmm. So, um, now we have all those that the only thing we have left now is um, the trees. So I'll let you go down and finish your mountains and then we're gonna put the trees on and then this one's done except for lifting out a moon. Okay, so I have some of my um, Antwerp still there and I'm gonna get probably a little bit more of my Antwerp. Antwerp is quite a strong color. You could also use um, you could also use indigo if you wanted. I often use that for my evergreen trees, but it's even darker, and I don't want it like too too dark. And so the other color I'm going to put into my trees is actually some of the cobalt, and I'm just going to put it over here. I know it's a little dirty, but it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to use a little bit of a yellow. And we can use either quinacridone gold or transparent yellow. I think I'm going to go with the transparent, no, uh, with the um, quinacridone gold because it gives a little bit of a not so bright green. And I'm going to just dirty it up out here in whatever I had. And see a little bit in here and a little bit in here and a little bit like that. So I don't want it too, too, too green and I want it quite dark and I want it not so bright. <coughs> you see that's for me is too bright with this. It doesn't go with the, what I have there. So a good color to put in again the is the burnt sienna or you could put a little bit of red in. But since I already have used burnt sienna in my painting, I want to mm -hmm. use some burnt sienna. Because burnt sienna, <coughs> as you can see, right, it's kind of like a dirty orange. Mm -hmm. uh, orange and blue are complementary colors. That's why, you know, we use it to gray down our blues to the snow color. And it'll also help um, tone down my uh, greens here. I'm gonna put a little bit more of that blue in. And it wasn't quite enough. And if it's not quite enough, I can also go over and take a little bit of my pink. Let's see how that would go. Yes. Could you see how that took it down a notch? Uh -huh. Not nearly as, as uh, bright. And see over here? Even less. It's more kind of gray green now. That's 
And I like to always like to have like several options. I'm like a fox. I want to have <laughs> a number of different so did exits. You use but uh, gold, gold, yes. Gold and then the conacridone rose. Uh, I used a permanent rose, permanent which rose. is what I have, but a, a conacridone rose would be the exact same, same thing. thing. Or you could use a red. And I also use some um, burnt sienna. But now I have what I want, which is a more toned down green. Can you see it's not so bright? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't go with what I have here. If I had it too bright. All right, so I'm happy. And I have like a variety now. I always like to have not just one color. So now I have a variety because I've, you know, been mixing around there. That's excellent. And then I am going to, I have it on, yes. I am going to use my dot bottle. I hold it up and I tap it. And so let me just do it here um, on the table first. Can you see the dots? Mm -hmm. That's the pattern I want. Mm -hmm. So I don't push down like this. Yeah, just I just tap it. Tap, 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 tap. tap, tap. Okay. And uh, I'm going to start in this corner here. And then we'll see how it goes. And I'm going to hold it up so you can maybe see a little bit. I don't know if you can. It's difficult to see. And I can't see it. Salt marks on it. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. There's salt marks on it. I can't see it, but I am good with not seeing it. Because the whole reason I put this on is because I want more random patterns and not have all these perfect little Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. um, so the way I like to paint them most of the time is I, I like to use my dagger brush. I load it up with the color and then I just dab in kind of like the trunks in a sense. And can you see how it fusses out some places? Mm -hmm. That's because, you know, it's hitting some of those wet spots. And I just dab in a bunch like that, maybe a one up like that. And um, then I go in, of course I can see I don't have quite enough, and then I taps a little bit more to get a little bit more water on and now I'm going to load up my brush again and I dip into the different kinds of puddles I have and I go in I usually put it on the side it's easier for me to do it this way and now I start just going across here and I always like to say this is really good if you have too much coffee it's perfect because <laughs> you want to kind of I call this this is dibbly dabbly <laughs> And I make sure that they kind of, you know, overlap, that they're not the same height because this is not a Christmas tree plantation that I'm painting. This is actually nature. And if I need another little trunk, I put it in. And so they usually will connect down here because, you know, they're wider at the bottom. And these are fairly young trees, so they have branches all the way down. These might be um, spruce trees. But it doesn't matter. We don't have, it's not, you know, for the gardening catalog or anything like that. Um, and so just go in and then I can go back in and dab in a little bit if, you know, I feel it needs a little, oops, a little darker some places. And I really want it to not be all the same. That's very important to me, not all the same. And I can go in and build in another one in there if I feel like it. And then just go in and get a little bit more blue on that one. I got very green. And then, so all that needs to look like evergreens are the tops and kind of like the, the sides. And then there'll be a lot of areas here that's just blobs. But if I tell the viewer that these are evergreens by making the shapes believable mm -hmm. at the outer edges, so to speak, they automatically, the viewer automatically say, oh, that's evergreens. That's how our brain works. So... You know, you don't have to paint everything perfect. And I go in again and darken up some places. And I like them to have, I don't want them all to have the exact same color. And this, you know, some can be a little darker, some can be a little lighter. And I just gotta be working fast here and not think too much. The only thoughts I wanna have are evergreen thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> evergreen thoughts and just 
Let me see here. I just sometimes you need to just take a look and see if, and then I just go in and fix some air. If I see some areas that's like, well, that looks weird. If it looks weird, I try to make it look less weird. <laughs> water. <laughs> and I have everything else fails. I just spray a little bit more water on and most of the time that does it. It's really not so and I know, I mean, I would say this is not that hard. It's really not that hard. But of course, I have done this a lot of times. And this is my, this is my way of painting evergreens. There are many other ways, but I find this works the best for me. I get, you know, I get some evergreens that I can live with. And just like that. And let's just see, do we have, so then, you know, we'll have a little time to look at it and see if there's something that really bothers us. And go in and do a little bit darker there. And I don't mind having a little bit like that. It's maybe like some little bushes are up in front or so, no, growing up. And if you get something like this here, I'm thinking to myself, eh, it's a little dark. A little dark. I take a tissue and I just go, boom. <laughs> <laughs> and then it comes back, you go, into like the other ones. And so it's just, you know, just with conviction, boom, up and it takes it away. And so there are some nice trees. And then I think I'll leave that. And then I wanna go in and I wanna make a few more trees like here, but they are further away. So they're gonna be a lot smaller. And I really like some of the texture I have here. So I don't want all of it to go away. Yeah. And so here, I think I wanna go in and they will be a little bit, they'll be paler and bluer, less defined because they're further away right because there's this ridge is in front mm -hmm. so you'll only see them kind of from the top oh yeah just the tops of them and they won't be that and i'll just do a couple because i don't want to lose all that texture that i love like and then i think that that texture can possibly look like some evergreens that you know have a lot of snow on them still that's what i'm thinking <laughs> so I'm just again dibbly dabbly and here I'm just going to do a little bit more random and not completed shapes yeah. because I want some of that snow that's already there to kind of shine through and then just a little bit more water on and just down there like that and I like that edge there. I think that looks good. And then maybe just to push them back a little bit. Pew, pew, <laughs> there, there we go again. But can you see that kind of puts them back yeah. where they belong? Yeah. I kind of like that. So if I like it, I don't see anything like glaring. I leave it. That's usually the best. If you want to see how to lift out a moon, come on up. And I shall share this with you and you can do it on yours if you like so i lift out a moon here so i use mr clean magic eraser which is what we find in the you know cleaning department of the drug stores or or our grocery stores or whatever and then i like to use one of these um Templates, circles, inking template, this one is called. They come in different varieties. You, this one, I bought it at, I think, Stables or Office Depot or one of those. Office Supply Store. You know, they always have kind of a little bit of an arts and craft department mm -hmm. somewhere. Um, and these are excellent. So I first, I'm going to find out what size moon I want. I think I want kind of like a reasonably big one. And then I think I want it kind of like here. So I take Mr. Clean, just dip him in a little bit of water. See, that's like all translucent there. And then I squeeze out all that water. It's not translucent looking anymore. And I go on my towel and I dab it a couple of times because you don't want to have so much water on it that it starts seeping out as you were uh, scrubbing your moon out. 
And then I take my template and I hold it down and then I just scrub out where I want my moon. And then before I let the template go, I dab with my Kleenex, clean Kleenex that I had in the other hand. Mm. Moon. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I actually like my moon better when I've done it like this because it's not completely white. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, and I think it looks more realistic that way. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. if you have masked mm -hmm. it out, it's very hard to mask it so that it's a perfect circle. And it's so bright white that you usually have to do something to it because it's just too perfect. So that is a very, very good way of lifting out a moon. And then you can see then Mr. Clean, he's dirty. So then I just uh, clean him up in, and squeeze it out and make sure he's clean. You do not want to scrub with a dirty Mr. Clean. So here you can see uh, what the finished uh, card looks like. This is the inside that we just finished painting. Um, so there you can see the mountain range and the torn edge. And here is uh, the outside. And as you can see, I didn't quite get the colors of the sky matched up, but oh well, still works. Um, and I hope you'll uh, try this out. It's a lot of fun. Um, here you can see what the card looks like when it's standing up, uh, the way uh, hopefully the recipient will display it. So happy painting and happy holidays.